I like that boy. I'll tell you of Mr. Pratt's demise. In return, you could answer some questions and let me look about. Lord Lawton will be out with Lady Lockridge later. Fine. I'll return. I'll trade for information about Master Pratt. But there's a higher cost for telling tales out of school and giving you the run of the house. You play a decent game of billiards? I have a passable game. I'm not really... I'm a devotee, but one can always improve. If you can teach me a lesson, we could have a chinwag afterward. If you can't, I'm mum. That's the deal, agreed? You seem quite sure of the outcome? As sure as the Lord Chief Justice wears a wig. <laughs> Be in the limelight with the lads at the Academy when I tell him I had you over a barrel here. <laughs> Is Lord Lawton a music aficionado? Very devoted to you Terpy and Terpsichore. Music's the only thing we have money for nowadays. Cylinders, scores, stands, new felt piano tuning and the like. Perhaps you might stand in my place at the table. You wield a decent cue. You take neither pleasure nor honour in playing me. It's you he wants. In that case, I wonder if Jock Mahoney still holds court at St. Bernard's. He may know Jenkins. As I recall, you two didn't part the best of mates. True, but I don't hold a grudge. <laughs> Do you recognize this remnant of red cloth? Hmm. It looks like a segment of ribbon. Yes. Government issue. The type used to bind official documents. There is no doubt in my mind that Pratt was a principal in the formula theft. He truly was a fool. But questions remain, surely. Why would Pratt have stolen it? Why indeed? And what did he do with it? And where is it now? And why was he killed? Fools tend to be foolish more than once. They are as dangerous to their friends as to their enemies.
Unless you were looking for a premature demise, best put down that cue case. Not much by way of conversation around here, is there? All a man could want, the surface even, mistress I ever had, sort of the earth, better than my nanny, better than my old hound. You know Mr. Mahoney then? Who? Sounds an Irish name. <laughs> I wouldn't know him, not my sort. Attractive redecoration, but you've lost some of your humbler custom. We continue to deceive gentlemen of leisure and refinement who take pleasure in the joys of intelligent conversation and the game of skill. Sounds like a magazine advert. It is. A large brandy, please. With pleasure, sir. That'll be a shilling. Hello, Jock. Remember me? Not likely to forget a world-famous Snoop, am I? I need a favor. Bad luck. I'm fresh out. Your marital affairs appear to have altered precipitously. What happened? My marriage is up the spout. I'll leave off before I stow this cue in your gullet. I assume you're still cock of the walk here. Would you like a game? Like you could give me one? No chance. I don't mess with amateurs. I'd pay for the privilege. Me? In your employ? Not bloody likely. I'm not good enough for you to play and you won't help me get better. Not terribly sporting. Stuff sporting. You had your way with me last time you was here. Never again. That's unfair, Jock. I caused you no real harm, and your information helped apprehend a vicious murderer. End justifies the means, does it? You forced me to grass on a friend. Do you prefer billiards or snooker? Makes no difference. I prefer drinking at my local and a game of darts. But a bloke's got to earn his daily bread. Or beer, as the case may be. Why is Mr. Mahoney in such a foul mood? I deal drinks and darts, sir. Information concerning my customers cannot be purchased in any price. The Metropolitan Police deal harshly with violation of the Temperance Act. Which is supposed to mean what? You're serving spirits to an inebriated person. What was it you wanted? Some civility for starters. Has Mahoney lost his wife? 
In a way, she sailed off to America with the whole O'Shea clan. <laughs>